In 1177 AD, the Anglo-Norman William de Savage served as one of enterprising John de Courcy's knights when he led a campaign from Dublin to conquer the province of Ulster, along with Knights Jordan, Audley, Russell, Fitzsimon, Welsh and White. After de Courcy's success, the Savages established their first castle at Ardkeen, which was built in 1190, and it remained their ancestral home until at least 1575. Generations of the Savage family fought in every major battle in Ulster, gaining wealth and status along the way. They were staunch supporters of the Anglo-Norman crown in England. At the time of Scottish Edward Bruce's landing in Carrickfergus in 1315 to lead his Scottish-Irish army, engaging the English crown loyal Norman rulers of Ireland, the Savages were amongst the most powerful families in Ulster. Sir Robert Savage survived the burning of his holdings at Rath Moor by the Bruce outside of Antrim and is thought to have campaigned in Scotland under King Edward II. Bruce was killed at the Battle of Foggart, Dundalk, three years later in 1318. This Sir Robert Savage grandson, also named Robert, was made the Seneschal of Ulster in 1335, one of the first of a long line of savages who served in this position for nearly 200 years. A Seneschal was an agent or steward in charge of a ruling lord's estates in feudal times, in this case the English king, and responsible for collecting and using taxes. By now, rich and powerful within Ulster, Henry Savage was titled a baron in 1374, although he subsequently lost this status for repeated non-attendance at court. At one point, the Savages controlled the whole Ards Peninsula, up to the town of Newton Ards, and were also lords of the Lecal. Lecal is a peninsula in the east of County Down. It lies between Strangford Loch and Dundrum Bay. After pressure from the native Clandy Boy O'Neills in the 14th century, the Savages were dislodged from the northern part of the peninsula and confined to the Little Ards, to the south of the peninsula. The Savages were a quarrelsome family, which in the mid-16th century resulted in the Little Ards being split in two between Raymond Savage, based at Ard King, and Roland Savage in Port of Ferry. Collectively, they built other castles in the Ards, such as Kirkestown, Ballygalgate, and the White House Ballyspurge. They also built other structures, such as Newton Ards Christian Priory in 1244, which was typical of devoutly religious Norman nobility. By the 1600s, the Savages had lost their sovereignty of the region and never regained their former status even with the fall of local Irish chief Con O'Neill, whose clan of boy had systematically driven most other Norman lords out of eastern Ulster in the 13 and 1400s. The incoming Scottish landowners of the early 1600s, Hugh Montgomery and James Hamilton, eventually settled in the area at the beginning of the plantation period. They exerted a new kind of influence on Ulster in the form of highly organised commerce, agriculture and industry. To trace their influence at this turning point in the province, let's take a closer look at one of them. Born in 1560, Hugh Montgomery was a Scottish laird who, as a young adventurer, had served as captain in a Scottish infantry regiment under William of Orange, a Dutch noble fighting to secure the independence of what is now Holland from the control of the Spanish king Philip II, a conflict that lasted in varying degrees for 80 years in total. Montgomery was an opportunist, keen to gain land and power where favourable situations presented themselves. He nurtured acquaintance with the Scottish King James I of England via his brother, a Dean of Norwich. Hugh subsequently met the Ulster Irish lady, Ellis O'Neill, and with some clever and daring planning, sprung her Irish chieftain husband, Con O'Neill, from imprisonment at Carrickfergus Castle on Belfast Loch. 
Con was incarcerated there by Queen Elizabeth I before her death for rebellion against the Queen, resulting from a local quarrel. Montgomery obtained a royal pardon for O'Neill from the King and received a third of his total lands in County Down after a rival, Hamilton, petitioned his way into this land grab. In 1606, Montgomery began settling his new lands with Scots from his native Lowland Territory, who would eventually run into the thousands. In 1613, Montgomery became a member of Irish Parliament and built a quay at Donacadee village to facilitate growing maritime trade with his native Scotland. In 1622, he was made a Viscount, and finally, he died in Newtonards in 1636. The Montgomery period of Kirkestown Castle recognises an important transition of ownership in Ulster, from Norman warrior nobility to a new class of opportunists come aristocracy, keen to commercially exploit a decimated province of Ulster after the brutal Nine Years' War. This conflict was a military contest for control of Ireland between Queen Elizabeth I of England and the native Irish nobility. This castle ownership transition also marked the new class of landowners out for their superior powers of diplomacy, cultural intelligence and industry where so many Elizabethan adventurers like Sir John Chichester had failed. It was, in effect, a Scottish solution to an Irish problem. This profitable settler wave would reinvigorate the flagging fortunes of some provincial nobles, much in the same way that American tycoon fortunes saved the estates of many English nobles through marriage in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In 1622, the Tower House in Bonn were built by Roland Savage. Kirkestown was bequeathed to Roland's middle son, John. His eldest inherited Ballygalgate, and his third son had Bally Spurge, where he built the White House. Kirkestown Castle was sold by Roland's grandson, James, who had inherited it in 1660, to Captain James McGill of Bally Monastra, who improved this place very much by building garden walls and houses and repairing it in and about it. An account dating to 1683 also notes that he built the windmill in Clochy, now on Kirkestown Golf Course, which is one of the earliest windmills in Northern Ireland and served as a landmark for sailors far out to sea. Captain McGill's eldest son Hugh was killed in 1690 and the castle was inherited by his daughter Lucy. Her daughter Mary, from her first marriage, she later married William Savage, is thought to have married a Montgomery, possibly explaining why Kirkestown became a property of that family. The Montgomerys extensively remodelled the castle in 1810 in a neo-Gothic style, possibly to use as a private dwelling. The Montgomerys replaced the original large windows of each floor with sash windows, possibly copying the window style from Castle Ward, which was built in the 1760s. Fireplaces were added to the ground floor and first floor level. Lower stories were plastered and decorated in pseudo-Gothic style. The original spiral staircase to the first floor level was replaced by a stone stair in two stair flights. In 1831, William Montgomery died before work was complete. His widow, Mary, gave the castle to the Clochy Presbyterian Congregation to hold services when their church was under construction. The castle soon became too small for the number attending. In the late 19th century, the castle was finally restored by the Montgomerys, and an account claims that people alive in 1884 remembered ladies of the Montgomery family living in the castle. Valuation records of the 1850s stated that it was used as a farm hand's dwelling. By the 1800s it was said to be inhabited only by cattle, pigs and jackdaws. Now let's take a look at the castle itself. 
Traditionally considered to have been built by Roland Savage in 1622, this makes it late for a typical Irish tower house. Tower houses are a fortified residence normally enclosed by a bawn as at Kirkistown. They would have acted as prestige homes in the landscape, while maintaining some defensive features against localised attack. They were a relatively common form of residence, built by both the Irish and English landed elite in Ireland, mostly between 1400 and 1600. It is therefore probably one of the last tower houses built in Ulster, and built when this style of construction was going out of fashion. For example, Roland's son Patrick built his house at Bally Spurge in the fortified gabled house style which supplanted the tower house design. Some thought that Kirkestown Castle was located on an earlier 15th or 16th century site, but that is difficult to ascertain. Roland Savage's branch of the Savages had resided in the neighbouring Mott at Kirkestown, still visible in the grounds of Kirkestown Golf Course, until they built Kirkestown Castle. Kirkestown Castle is a three-storey tower house with an attic, set in a fortified enclosed space called a bomb. The castle is rectangular in plan and originally would have had a stone vault over the main first floor chamber. Internal plan of the castle is similar at each floor and consists of a main chamber approximately 7 metres by 4 metres with a narrow room although there are two narrow rooms within the height of the second floor level. The upper floors and roof were reached by a spiral staircase located in the south angle of the tower. None of the original large windows survived as they were altered in the 1800s, but the smaller lights are original with square semicircular ogee pointed or convex pointed heads. Some of these windows have sinkings in the head and sill to accommodate shutter pivots. The ground floor was protected both by a hinged iron grille as well as a machicolation at roof level. This would have been used to throw missiles from the battlements onto anyone trying to force the door. The original windows would have been small and narrow. These prevented access and allowed defenders to fire through them. Gun loops, small openings in the stonework that could be fired through, were also built into the east and west corners of the ground floor. The bawn would probably have been square in plan and enclosed an area of approximately 150 foot square in plan with a circular turret at each corner, although only two of these flankers survive. The ground floor would have originally been used for storage of foodstuffs and materials. The entrance had an external rebate for a hinged iron grille. The pivots are still visible. The grille was secured from within the tower by means of a chain passing through an oblique hole in the southwest jamb. The first floor level would originally have been used as a living and entertaining space. The second floor level was used as the Savage's personal living space and originally would be the only heated floor. It is the first level that has a latrine. This floor consists of the main chamber as well as two narrow rooms in the height of the level rather than the single narrow rooms on the first and ground floors. At the roof level, the spiral staircase would have originally continued to the roof, but it is now accessed by a modern ladder. The wall walk is continuous on three sides, with transverse rainwater channels built of overlapping slabs which discharge through weep holes. The parapets has weathered copings and sills to throw water from the surfaces. There is a machicolation on the southeast wall and a latrine in the north angle of the tower and is protected from the weather by a projecting stone flag. The tower house would originally have had a gable roof. The outline of the roof and floor level of the attic storey was visible in the wall face of the adjacent parapet when surveyed in 1966.